Hey everyone, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. You know, a lot of people say to me, stop shouting. I'm like, this is just the way I talk, dude. Um, if you came to one of my classes, you would know that. But since you just sit around goofing around on the internet, you don't know. So, uh, yeah, anyway. So today we are going to be putting binding onto this neck that we got from Ben at Crimson Guitars for our... Um, uh, our great guitar build off 2020 entry and I kind of I kind of spaced it out you guys I already cut the headstock out uh, and I probably should have made a video of that but let me tell you the tools that I used a bandsaw and a sander so you can imagine that it was pretty straightforward to do to uh, to get this headstock shape um, and I don't think Ben's gonna send me another neck to uh, to show you guys how to do it on a video maybe I'll do another one like that one day but I digress so anyway, um, uh, in a previous video, Chris showed you how we pulled all the frets from the neck and then we radius the board and we routed for binding. And so now um, what will happen is the binding will just sort of go in this little channel right here. I mean, that's been the wrong angle there and it'll look really great. Um, and some people have asked what we're doing with the inlay. Don't get ahead of me. Uh, you'll see what's going to happen with these inlays that have disappeared. Um, but enough of the bullshit talk. Let's start binding the neck. I got everything I need. Um, I'm going to move the camera and we're going to get started. All right, y'all know the drill. We've done a bunch of binding videos. We're going to tape the binding into its little uh, rabbit here. And then we're going to wick acetone in between the binding and the, um, and the material. And after it sets up, it's going to look like $100 million. Um, we will have to come down to this end and bend the binding around, but that's not going to be too tricky. We're using white binding because it works with the rest of the, uh, the colors that we've chosen for this build. Yeah, Brad Angove will probably say, don't you know you're not supposed to use white binding after Labor Day or something like that. I don't know what he... He probably knows way more about fashion than I do. But I never claimed to be a fashionista, just like he never claimed to be a guitar maker. All right, so that side looks pretty good. Now we have to bend around this corner and this corner and go to the rest of the uh, go through the rest of the neck. All right, I got my jig relocated here, and now I'm just going to put my heat gun right on the edge and bend everything into place, and it's going to look cool. Okay guys, I got my straight lines done, I got the contours around my heel done, and I even kicked this little guy out here because it needed to be bent as well. So now we're just going to wick some acetone in between the, um, the uh, ABS binding and the wood, let it sit up for a couple hours and it should be good to go. So let me show you how to do that. All right, I've got some acetone in this little paint can here, and I'm going to suck some of it up into this syringe. And then we're just going to flow it right in between the, uh, the binding and the wood. And capillary action is going to suck it in between the two, and it's going to do what it's going to do. We've got so much planned for this neck, I don't want to tell you guys what it is, but here's what I will tell you. I'm going to have to clean these slots out a bunch of times. So we went ahead and we, we actually, after we, after we radiused the board again, because we wanted it to be 10 inch radius, um, I, I made the slots a little deeper and because um, I knew we would have to. As we go through this, we'll have to get scrape the uh, this binding crud that gets in the uh, in the slots. We'll have to scrape that out of there, and um, because we've got lots and lots and lots of good stuff coming for this neck, and I can't spill the beans yet, but I can tell you that there is no way anybody else in this contest stands a chance with what Chris and I have come up with. All right, let's let that set up for a couple hours, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back. I'll show you what's, what's going on. 
All right, it's been a couple of days, as you can see, because I don't have the same shirt on, and all of our binding is done. I just have to pull off this tape, and um, then I think we are ready to shape this neck, because you know normally what we would do is we would fret it while everything's nice and flat on the back, but we've got other plans for this neck, and uh, it's time to shape it, which is also cool, because then I get to show you guys how to do it. One thing I forgot to tell you all that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to scrape back the binding because it's proud of the fretboard. And I'm just going to use a file to do that. And uh, it won't take long. So we'll just use a file and uh, make sure to match the radius that we worked so hard to get on there in the first place. You guys know, we, we've done this before, you guys know this, this trick already. One other thing I forgot to tell you all about is it's way easier to drill for your side dots when everything's flat than when everything's round. So we did that too. Okay, side dots are in. Binding is done. Um, everything else looks pretty good to go. Oh, we will probably at some point thickness this headstock because it's a little on the proud side. It's right at 5 8 and um, that probably works for the tuners that they give you guys when you order the stuff from Crimson, but we're gonna use hip shots. And I like to go a little slimmer on that, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll make this guy a little thinner at some point too. But um, we are ready to start shaping. So um, I have drawn, and I'm going to make it a little darker so you guys can see the lines that I need to make sure I, that's where the, the, the shaping starts and that's where it ends. So all of this will be rough shape. I'm going to use, um, people ask me all the time, like, what's your standard neck contour? And because all of our necks are done one at a time, there's no such thing as a standard. Um, but I'm going to do what I like, which is about 860 at the, um, at the first fret and 900 at the 12th fret or thereabouts. <clears throat> Maybe we'll go a little bit slimmer than that. And I was already asked by one viewer, if I could not use the roundover bit um, to do to do uh, remove a bunch of material, because that's not the way a real hand uh, uh, tool user would do it. So I, I guess like he wants me to chew it with my teeth, but I'm not going to use the roundover bit. I'm actually going to use a really old school technique, and for that we need to go to the bandsaw. All right, an old school way to take off some of the material from your neck before you start hand shaping is to run it through the bandsaw kind of at some angles and take the material off. Now, I do not recommend that you guys do this, okay? But because someone kind of called me out and said, don't use the, um, uh, the router table, I don't know what his problem with the router table is, but I thought I would do this. So as you can see, I started to round over a bunch of this stuff with the bandsaw, and um, it's it's kind of a spooky technique. And I, like I said, guys, I don't recommend that you do that. But if you do have a bandsaw and you don't have a router table, well, first of all, go out and buy a router table. And second, um, 
it is a it is a valid technique. Like I said, that's kind of an old school way to do it. And um, I can't remember where I saw guys doing that, but um, probably in a really old book. I'm an old guy. I have old books, so that's kind of the way it goes. But you know, we have an even cooler way to do this, and we're gonna have, head over to the deadhead sander right now and uh, get to work on that. sander is a really old school tool. They used to use them um, in factories in the 50s and they probably used them all the way through the 80s and even into the 90s in some places. Um, as you can see, it's, it's, we, we have ours, which is a, a shop made tool, kind of made so that we could put a whole neck on here and, um, and just shape the whole thing. Um, there's my line that I want to match right there. I'm getting pretty close. And here's my line for the uh, headstock. I'm getting close to that too, but I have to worry about this little um, part of the headstock, so I might end up doing that by hand. But like I was saying, at the first fret, I'm about 850, and at the 12th fret, I'm right at 900. So that's, um, that's kind of a old school C shape, and we've got a little more shaping to do, so I'm gonna finish up on the deadhead sander, everything that I can get sorted out, and uh, then we'll maybe do a little bit of hand work. So I've got everything rough shaped and you notice I've been putting my hands on it the whole time. I'm feeling for things that aren't right or flat spots or you know things that should not be on a neck and that's kind of what we do here is we make necks and guitars using our hands not using machines. Um, and that's what separates us from other builders. So um, if your guitar builder can't do this or can't show you videos like this then I don't know, you might have an all parts neck. Anyway, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna shape this part here with uh, rasps and sandpaper, and we're gonna get everything feeling, um, feeling good and feeling like a guitar neck ought to. Um, I went ahead and took it down. Now I'm at about 8.3 and 8.7. So we're getting where I want to be. Um, the 8.6 and the 900, or 8.60 and 900, that's kind of a rough start. But we're feeling pretty good, and we didn't burn through to uh, Ben's truss rod. I'm sure it's designed so that you can make a neck that's 780, 800, something like that at the first fret. So anyway, uh, we're done on the deadhead sander, but the deadhead sander is a cool tool, and it makes short work of shaping necks. All right, now I've got my neck in my little handy neck uh, jig here. And I'm just going to uh, smooth out this area where the, um, the neck ends and the headstock begins. It's a little easier to do this with a, with a rasp or a file or sandpaper um, than it is a 50 grit sanding belt upside down. So yeah, that's, that's the way that I recommend you do it too, even if you have a deadhead sander. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the heel. Now I'm going to take my little gauge here and mark everywhere where I need to take material off to keep everything symmetrical and I'll probably go back over to the deadhead sander to do this because it's just a little easier except for the places
near the the heel and the um, and the headstock. That's just about it. Our neck is more or less shaped. We need to chase it with some 60 and 80 grit paper and get the final shape just exactly right. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and sand to 220 and we'll be ready to move on to the next step of this neck. But I fear that a lot of that is going to be top secret because of uh, the nature of our build for the Great Guitar Build Off 2020. Speaking of which, there's a link in the description below to the Great Guitar Build Off page and uh, a friend of ours, Eric, has put a list of all the videos <clears throat> uh, that other, other builders have made, including himself. He's missing a couple of our live ones, but there's so much video content out there that you guys can just type in Great Guitar Build Off in our page and find every last one of them. And if you want to get in on the Great Guitar Build Off yourself, you can buy a kit at a reduced price from Crimson Guitars. And if you put in Texas 10 or Texas Toast 10, I think it is, it's in the description below, um, you get a little bit of a price break. So um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about what we did, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click the subscribe button? We do all kinds of crazy stuff like this almost every day. Um, if you appreciate content like this and you want to help us out, you might want to consider going over to our Patreon page and becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share the video as many places as you can possibly think of. And that's Chris standing in the background. This is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, y'all.